Xin chào buổi sáng tất cả các thầy cô. Rất vui khi được gặp lại các thầy cô vào một ngày buổi sáng chủ nhật nữa ha. À, nhưng hôm nay Hạnh sẽ đồng hành cùng với mọi người ở một vai trò khác là sẽ không chia sẻ với mọi người nữa mà sẽ giới thiệu đến mọi người một cái bài chia sẻ của một giáo viên, một người chuyên gia về lĩnh vực tâm lý. À, trước hết thì xin mọi người cho Hạnh trách lại một chút xíu là hiện giờ mọi người có đang nghe thấy Hạnh rõ không ạ? À? Nếu mà có thì mọi người vui lòng gõ chữ yes vào chat box xíu Hạnh nhé. Ok, beautiful, cảm thấy rất nhiều người ha, đã có thể nghe được rõ hạnh rồi. Rồi, xin chào mừng tất cả các thầy cô. À, chào mừng thầy cô đến với buổi hội thảo, chuỗi hội thảo nâng cao chất lượng giảng dạy trực tuyến của hệ thống Anh Văn Hội Việt Mỹ đại diện cho VUS à, hôm nay hạnh rất vui được đồng hành với các thầy cô à, thêm một lần nữa cùng với cô diễn giả là Miss Emma Cronwright ngày hôm nay à, sẽ chia sẻ với mọi người à, với những thử thách trong tình hình mới à, nhất là một sự bắt đầu mới lại một cuộc sống mới sau Covid việc tối ưu hóa giảng dạy và học trực tuyến là một trọng tâm ưu tiên của các trường duy trì tiến độ giảng dạy và tạo ra môi trường học tập một cách an toàn đồng thời khơi mở những giá trị mới cho cả giáo viên, học viên và phụ huynh và VUS rất tự hào là một trong các đơn vị giáo dục lấy chuyển đổi số làm trọng tâm phát triển trong giai đoạn này từ chính những trải nghiệm của mình trong hơn một năm vừa qua chúng tôi thấu hiểu được phần nào những khó khăn và thách thức từ việc đứng lớp trực tuyến trong mùa dịch của đội ngũ giáo viên đặc biệt là đội ngũ giáo viên khối phổ thông với một đặc tính là lớp học thường có số lượng học viên rất đông. Vì vậy, chúng tôi muốn chia sẻ những trải nghiệm trong việc chuyển đổi số của trường để cùng đồng hành với quý thầy cô hướng đến nâng, lên, nâng cao chất lượng giảng dạy anh ngữ trong giai đoạn online. À, trước khi bắt đầu buổi hội thảo, Hạnh xin được trước hết là chúc mừng các thầy cô đã may mắn nhận thưởng từ buổi hội thảo tuần trước. Từ, tuần trước mọi người có nhớ là mình có năm giải thưởng lớp thi draw không ạ? À? À, thì hôm nay mình đã có danh sách của tất cả các thầy cô đã được giải Lucky Draw của ngày hôm đó rồi. Bây giờ chúng ta sẽ cùng xem thử là các thầy cô nào đã may mắn có được giải thưởng này nhé. Trên màn hình các thầy cô có thấy rõ tên và địa chỉ email không ạ? À? Năm thầy cô này đã may mắn giành được năm bộ sách Grammar Builder là năm bộ sách tham khảo để dạy về ngữ pháp. À, xin chúc mừng thầy Huỳnh Nghĩa Trí. Xin chúc mừng cô Phan Ngọc Linh Đan. Thầy Trần Hoàng Quân. Xin chúc mừng uh, thầy Nguyễn Trọng Huy Hoàng và xin chúc mừng cô Nguyễn Thị Hồng là những người đã giành được giải thưởng may mắn từ chương trình lần trước. Uh, Anh Văn Hội Việt Mỹ sẽ liên hệ với các thầy cô, sẽ gửi email liên hệ với các thầy cô. Nên mong các thầy cô mình hãy uh, kiểm tra hộp thư thoại, hộp thư email thường xuyên để có thể biết được cách thức nhận được giải thưởng này từ Anh Văn Hội Việt Mỹ nhé. Uh, xin một lần nữa chúc mừng các thầy cô rất là nhiều. Sau đây là một số những cái lưu ý nhỏ trong suốt quá trình buổi hội thảo của chúng ta. Vào cuối buổi hội thảo ngày hôm nay, Hạnh sẽ gửi cho mọi người một đường link survey vào trong chat box để quý thầy cô có thể tham gia, đóng góp ý kiến và có thể tải về giấy chứng nhận sau buổi tham gia. À, cũng xin lỗi các thầy cô về sự cố của đường link survey trong buổi hội thảo lần trước. À, đã khiến cho nhiều thầy cô gặp phải sự cố không thể nào hoàn thành cái bài khảo sát được à, Thì cái link survey ngày hôm nay đã được chỉnh sửa lại rồi Hy vọng là quý thầy cô sẽ không gặp thêm khó khăn nào nữa à, Trong thời gian diễn ra hội thảo Nếu thầy cô có bất kỳ câu hỏi nào liên quan đến nội dung Thì có thể để lại câu hỏi ở trong phần Q&A Hoặc là trong phần chat box Để cuối giờ diễn giả có thể đi qua lại các cái câu hỏi này À, còn bây giờ thì Hạnh sẽ không để mọi người chờ đợi lâu hơn nữa Hạnh xin được giới thiệu đến mọi người Cô Emma Cronwright sẽ là người chia sẻ nội dung ngày hôm nay à, Liên quan đến Mental Health and Wellbeing for Educators uh, So Emma, I will give it back to you now All right, okay I'm just going to share my screen Hello, Mai. Yes, of course, I remember you. I can see your message in the in the chat box. Welcome back. I'm glad you're joining us again. Um, yes, yeah, so I became a mom last year. Um, my daughter was born in February 2020, and we all know what happened in March 2020, the world came to a stop. So um, yeah, I really, I, I started to think about, well, how can we take care of mental health, especially during this really strange period of our lives? Okay, 
sorry, my, come on. Thank you for your congratulations. Yeah, she's almost two now. So um, <laughs> it's a totally new experience as those of you that are parents to toddlers know. All right, I'm just going to quickly clarify some definitions because I don't want to, um, I don't want to speak about something and then you're thinking, what is she talking about? So just basically mental health, um, so that you know what it is. It's our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Okay, so well-being is a lovely word because it's about being well. It affects how we think, how we feel, how we act. Okay, so that obviously impacts our jobs, our um, interactions with people in our family, everything we do. It helps determine how we handle stress, how we relate to others, and how we make healthy choices. It's important at every stage of life. So your childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Okay. Then I will speak about burnout. And burnout is something that is increasingly common, but a lot of people don't actually know about it. And in your professions like teaching, burnout is a real problem. So this is like a syndrome that results from chronic workplace stress where you are not actually managing the stress successfully. And so what starts to happen is you start feeling extreme exhaustion. It's more than just being a little tired. It's extreme depletion. You um, might start feeling completely mentally distanced from your job. Sort of what you used to care about, you no longer feel bothered by. And um, you start to become maybe very negative or cynical towards your job. Okay, this is actually a syndrome. All right. Um, depression. You might have heard this word before, but what does it actually mean? It's more than just feeling a little sad. So it's a feeling of sadness, but more than that, a loss of interest in the activities you once enjoyed. Okay. That's a big thing for some people. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems and often decrease your ability to effectively function at home or at work. And then this is really what a lot of today is about self-care. Self-care is the practice of taking action to preserve or improve your own health. Self, obviously, meaning only you can do it for yourself. And um, then I will speak about boundaries. And maybe you are familiar with the term boundaries. In English, it often means borders or walls. But the type of boundaries I'm referring to today are personal boundaries. Okay, so these are boundaries, limits, and rules we have to actually set for ourselves in order to take care of ourselves. Okay, and then you might hear me say WFH, which means work from home. Maybe you know that abbreviation. All right, so without further ado, what is mental health? Okay, so everybody has it. We all have mental health, just like we have physical health. Okay, but we can see physical health. So that means we talk about it more. But our physical health and our mental health, they have a bi-directional relationship, which means if the one's not doing well, the other will be affected and vice versa. Okay, but just because we talk so much about physical health doesn't make mental health less important. In fact, it's kind of a problem that we only talk about our physical health. You know, I always use this example in my webinars. Maybe you've heard me say this before if you've joined before. But, you know, if you have a headache or you have um, a sore throat, you'll phone your friend and you'll say, oh, I'm not feeling so well today. But if you are having a hard day mentally, you probably won't call a friend and tell them as much. Maybe you do. And that's fantastic. But a lot of people feel a bit of shame and um humiliation around sharing how they're doing mentally. Okay. It does not mean being happy all the time. Okay. That is not what being mentally healthy is about. We can't always be happy 24 seven, but it's about being able to manage your range of emotions in a healthy way. Okay. Your relationships and coping with change and uncertainty. Now, this is where it's really important because during COVID-19, there's been a lot of change and uncertainty and it's affected all of us. Okay, so I want to ask you, and this is where I'd love you to share in the chat box, please. How are you doing with all that's going on right now in the past few months? And have you noticed any changes in the things you used to be able to do quite easily and now maybe are not so easy? Please share um, if you have anything to share. Me, okay. In your chat Anybody? box, everyone, in your chat box, can you just share? How, how are you doing? You can say I'm fine. You can say I'm, I'm not fine. Good. 
Okay. Anybody not not good? Anybody struggling? Not easy working from home, especially teaching. I am with you. I'm not fine. Sometimes get stressed from deadlines and KPIs. Yeah. More headaches. Fascinating, Mr. Nam. That's really interesting. So there's definitely a link between the physical and the mental health. I don't even don't want to improve. Yeah. Yeah, so that loss of energy, that loss of drive. Not fine at all, but I need to stay positive. Oh, yeah, stressed. Fine now. Sorry, yes, that's very helpful, um, Miss Hunt. If I talk too quickly, please let me know. I do have a habit. Sorry. Staying home makes me bored and stagnant. Absolutely not good. Okay, yeah, these are, um, I think your comments are really online endless work. It has such an impact on us, right? Okay, sometimes stress. Yeah. Oh, I love what Hang Les just said. Trying to balance family and work life. I mean, we are not superhuman. Having mental issue for the past month due to the pandemic and so much preparation for the online class. Oh, absolutely. You are not alone with that, I promise you. Physical problems, sore eyes, sore shoulders, backache. I mean, sitting like this. You know, you're teachers from a profession where you are usually moving and interacting and standing and having so much more engagement in your day to staring at a screen for hours on end. It's, it's a big adjustment. Okay. Thank you for your feedback, guys. That's really helpful. All right. So, yeah, this is kind of the feedback I unfortunately expected that people are understandably struggling. And people are also doing incredibly well, given the circumstances. But of course, we are struggling. And it's okay to be struggling. Okay. But having poor mental health has a direct impact on our ability to function. And this means in our work lives, being a good um, partner, being a good parent, being a good member of the household, it, it all gets affected. Okay. And... Um, there are different factors in our life that will also have an impact on the quality of our mental health. But sadly, as I mentioned, mental health is not a topic we talk about enough. In fact, it's quite taboo. I don't know if you know this term taboo. And this means we kind of, we keep it, shh, we don't talk about this. And I don't know why that is exactly because it's around the world, um, a taboo topic, but a lot of it is about misinformation. So we don't actually always have the correct information and stigma. Okay. So there's negative ideas attached to mental health, but this brings with it a lot of risks because if we don't talk about it, the problems will just grow. Okay. And we need to realize that if we don't address these problems, things can only get harder for people. Okay. So during COVID-19, global mental health issues have skyrocketed. Okay. And um, teachers are one of your groups that are seriously at risk for mental health challenges. That's why please pat yourselves on the back for joining us today, because it means you are taking charge in trying to preserve your own mental health. Okay. Uh, sorry, my computer is so slow. I'm trying to change the slide. Ah, okay. So sadly, there is not enough local research on how Vietnamese teachers are doing in 2020 and 2021. So we look to international research. A lot of the research that has been done around the world is on how our kids are doing. Okay, and of course, this is important. Absolutely. But there's not enough research to say, well, hang on, how are our teachers doing? Okay. And in 2021, there was a state of the U.S. teacher survey conducted. So that's really recent to see how teachers in the U.S. are doing. And I want to know if you think the statistics might look similar in Vietnam. Okay. So more than 75% reported increased job-related stress. Okay. More than the 40% of other people from other industries. Okay, so more than 75% of teachers in the U.S. are struggling with stress. Okay, more teachers were wanting to leave the profession than before the pandemic. And one in three teachers have their own children or their own family lives to take care of. 
as well as an entire classroom. I don't know how this would look in terms of the Vietnamese statistics, but in our public schools in Vietnam, you often have enormous class sizes. So that's another added stress, not to mention all the challenges that come with coping with online technology tools and, and getting your students to engage. So um, do you think these statistics might look similar in Vietnam? Do you think worse? What do you think? It would be nice if we had some local research to, to refer to. I think, I think it would probably be um, a similar picture. I wonder if perhaps more than one in three teachers have their own children um, in Vietnam. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's, it's safe to say that teachers are struggling. They're doing the best they can, but they're struggling. So may I ask you, Ms. Han has kindly prepared a poll, but I would like you to please rate your stress level during the pandemic, the past few months, on a one to five scale. One being pretty low, actually very low, and five being the most stressed you could possibly be. You'll see the poll pop up on your Zoom screen, and I'm very interested to see your responses. Can you see the the the, the poll? Yes, Emma. There are there are voting now. There are rating. Oh, now. I don't know why I can't view the votes. Yeah, you cannot see it until I view the results. Oh, so, I see. I see. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So when everybody is finishing their voting, I'll share the results. Fantastic. Okay, it'll be a surprise for me. Everyone, please rate on the poll that I just post up there. I can see that eighty one of you have been voted. Um, I, I saw that some of them left put their, uh, the put their votes in the, in the chat. chat. That's fine. Yes. That's fine. Just so we get a general idea. Okay, I'll wait until we have roughly a hundred votes, then we'll share the results to everybody. Yeah, I think maybe stress has become the new normal for a lot of us, which is not always a good thing. Okay, so in the chat we have threes, fours, four and a half. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's pretty high. Three. Okay, I think we can publish yeah, the results. We have um, roughly 63% now. So I think I can end it now and share mm -hmm. the results. Okay, all right. So three is definitely our highest fours, some fives, some ones and twos. Okay, so yeah, you can see this is actually a really interesting um, graph. The threes and the fours are, are, are highest and that is um, average to above average stress levels, you know, and I mean, if you think about it, we've been in a lockdown state for, is it around six months? So six months living with that amount of stress, cortisol in your body constantly can't be good for your health. Thank you very much, Ms. Han. Okay, moving on. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Okay, so what affects my mental health? All right, so it's, it's a combination of things, okay? And um, not all of these things are in our control. And it's also not a quick fix, something you can just change overnight. It needs balance. I love this word. Balance, balance, balance. And um, if we start to just pay attention to all of these areas of our lives, we will see improvement in our, out in our mental health outcomes and our performance outcomes. So if you look at these areas, your biological health, your psychological health, and your social health, how do you think you're doing? Okay, so genetics, we obviously have very limited control over our genetics. But what about your physical health? 
This we actually have quite a lot of control over. How's your sleep? How's your eating? How's your movement during the last few months? How's that been? I'm sure many of you have found that it's been affected by this massive change in lifestyle. And possibly that has also been impacting your mental health, that you haven't been able to sleep as well, or you haven't been eating as well as you'd like to, or you um, haven't been able to exercise the way you used to. Has anybody found their physical health has been affected? Sorry, I've just missed the chats. I beg your pardon. I like staying in touch with the chats. Yeah, it's so tricky. Demands from parents. Yeah, I feel like a robot. Oh, yeah. Taking care of your own child while teaching is new to me. I couldn't agree more. It's, yeah, when, you know, in, in past times, you would be at work. Someone else would be looking after your child. You didn't have to think, my child is having a tantrum right now. You know, you could focus. Whereas you might be in one room and your child's in the other room, but you can hear that tantrum. And it's very distressing for a parent. Okay, so making my tummy bigger. Weight is higher than before. Long periods of sitting. Food, my ultimate stress reliever. Absolutely. Eye problems. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you have experienced physical health problems and often when you're stressed the quality of your sleep is impacted okay now think about your psychological health have you been feeling more negative thoughts um feelings of stress isolation um or just complete overwhelm i'm going to guess that from some of the poll results some of you ha probably have okay um and then i think the biggest one social you know, we're in this the age of social distancing. We as humans are social beings. We are used to seeing people on a daily basis, connecting, engaging, interacting, especially as teachers. We have such social professions, the staff room, the classroom, and now it's a one-man show. It's, it has an effect on us, I think. So do you feel... It's, it's affecting you not seeing others as much? Or perhaps you're an introvert and this time has been wonderful for you. I usually get angry with my children because of stress from work. Absolutely. So it plays out in other areas of our life. Work's affecting us, so home life's affected. Vice versa. Okay. R Richard says, I still have time to play online CODM game. <laughs> We all have to have our, um, our outlets, and I'm going to get to, to, to um, self-care right now. Okay, so quick analogy, because I love an analogy. Many of you have probably flown on a plane before. And you know when you get on the plane, when they do the safety demonstration, they say, please fix your own um, oxygen mask before helping others. And if you remember anything from today's discussion, I want it to be this. You need to help yourself first before you can be effective in helping others. So think of your own oxygen mask and then you can do others' oxygen masks. Look after yourself and you will be a better teacher. You will be a better parent. You will be a better partner, a better member of your household. Okay, so that's my most important point for the day. All right, so self-care. Some people think that self-care is selfish. And I want to say, boo, this is not true. In fact, it's the opposite of selfish. It is selfless. If you take a little bit of time, I think this analogy is similar to Vietnam's culture, I think. Oh, that's lovely. Well, that's really good to hear that it is embedded in culture. So if you are taking care of yourself, as I said, you are more effective in the things you do. So as a teacher, especially, you spend a lot of time thinking about the needs of your students, okay? What about your needs? Who's taking care of your needs, okay? 
And what about your your household needs? You you know, if you have children, or you know, if you have a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife, if you have parents in your family, you know, you're probably also spending a lot of time caring for others. And we need to stop and say, but hang on, who's caring for me? All right. So I'd love to know from you. Please share in the chat. Do you practice self-care? Okay. Remember, self-care looks different for everyone. For some people, it's gaming. For others, it's um, listening to uh, their favorite music at full blast volume um, while dancing in their pajamas. It looks different for all of us. But what do you do that's for you? Not frequent enough, Beachy says. I think that's probably quite common. Not enough time for self-care. Oh, no. Yes, I usually read books, meditate, do some yoga. Fantastic, Lynn. That's really good to hear. Oh, I'd, I'd be really happy to hear if, if um, many people are making time for self-care. With balanced diet and sleep. Cooking. Yes, that's a common one. A lot of people find cooking very, very therapeutic and just their time to, to, to not think about anything else other than what you're preparing. Okay. All right. So, um. Do you feel like you could make more room or time in your life for this area? Possibly some people. Self-care is vital for being beautiful and smart human being, but being a human, we also have to take care of the needy ones during COVID. Absolutely. So I am not at all saying that we must now go, forget about everybody else. But I'm saying probably... Uh, the nature of being a teacher in this profession, you are thinking about others a lot. And I just want to also make sure you are taking time for yourself so that you can be a, more effective with others because that's when your burnout happens. People who are giving, 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 giving and not doing anything for themselves are at high risk for burnout. Okay. Especially, you know, yeah, caregivers of children because children have needs you know, and, and, and they need adults to support them. Talking. Nice. Okay. All right. Remember what works for you might not work for another. So I am the world's most terrible cook. In my family, my husband cooks. So for him, cooking is self-care. For me, it would be very stressful. So it, it, it's got to work for you. Sharing with others. Um, yeah. Okay, so a lot of you are saying, well, where's the time for self-care? Got so many work demands. How do we actually... <laughs> Ms. Hines says, I didn't know Dan can cook. He... Yes, he's a very good cook, actually. Um, most of the time. <laughs> I hope you can't hear me. But um, online prayers, nice. Netflix, self-care first and then for others. Exactly. It does not... Please remember this. It doesn't mean being selfish. Okay, just some ideas I like. Um, loud music. When my mom cooks, she has opera, full blast. Ooh, and she just, that's her heaven. Um, reading, maybe it's reading. Maybe it's uh, switching off your phone at a certain time of the day. And this, especially if you're getting email notifications from work, this is really an important one. Um, exercise for a lot of us is crucial so whether it's yoga it's like some of you have shared jogging going for a walk which now we finally can do again um you know there are ways that we can do this that we can still be safe but we, we really have to say well what, what about our other areas of health that are being affected by being at home constantly watching comedies on tv sometimes i sit down in front of the tv and my husband wants to watch something serious and I say, no, I just need to laugh. I need to watch something silly and goofy and laugh. I don't want to be serious. So whatever works for you. Oh, my says she learns about mindfulness. That's fantastic. Conscious of taking care of myself and my children. Oh, Lam, that is so good to hear. Really, really good to hear that people are already practicing this. Being creative. Okay. I'm sure there are a lot of inner children in all of us that have these creative strengths that we don't practice enough you know maybe it's making something maybe it's drawing maybe it's sewing maybe it's writing maybe it's um playing an instrument whatever it might be that you you're finding time in your day you're actually creating that time 
Okay, so I mentioned boundaries, and this is probably the area that um, a, a lot of people have really struggled with during the pandemic. Okay, so you've got home and you've got work, and now the lines are blurred. The place where you eat, sleep, hang out with your family is now the place where you work all day. So it's really hard to make that separation. Okay, especially if your space doesn't allow for it. Right now, I'm sitting in my bedroom because it is the one room I can close my door and my daughter won't come go, mommy, 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 mommy. Okay, so it's, it's challenging. Okay, so um, I really think it's an area one needs to become quite disciplined around. Okay, so I have my workspace. When I'm in my workspace, I'm at work. Okay my bunny ears I'm at work so I can't be disturbed when I'm at work this means that when I'm finished working I close my laptop just like I would leave work and it's about making those um those limits between what's work and what's not work and that's become really hard for some of us so um if you can have a room or an area in your house that's your classroom and in that space nobody is allowed to disturb you um it's the place where you plan you mark, you prepare your lessons, but it's not where you hang out and relax. It's your workspace, okay? Um, if there's a way you can switch off email notifications at a certain time or close your laptop, some people find it helpful to actually have a second phone for their work emails or work notifications so that they leave that phone on the table until tomorrow morning, whatever it might be. Um, if you are fortunate enough to have childcare or support for your, you know, helping with your children, which I know a lot of people in Vietnam, because of the family structure, we have grannies and grandpas, luckily, to help us. But, um, you know, if you were at work, you wouldn't be think you wouldn't be hearing your children. So to try and allow to release some control and accept that your kids are fine with whoever's playing with them or, or keeping them busy, um, and rather using the advantage of being at home to to your advantage okay so that means there's no more traffic to worry about so can you use that time you might have spent in the traffic for yourself can you sleep a little bit longer in the mornings can you take a little bit longer to um drink your morning coffee or whatever it might be but really um trying to take advantage of being at home okay um, also investing in your workspace okay so we're sitting at a table and a desk all day so how can we make it uh, a positive space we want to be in so your seating is your seating comfortable is your lighting good you know if your lighting's poor and you're doing this all day that also is not good for your eyes um, is your desk space messy and cluttered so you sort of sit down and you feel stressed immediately you know think about how you might set up your classroom can you do the same for your workspace? Okay. And then the last one, do you say no enough? And this is a really important skill in boundary setting. Could you say no more? Remember, no is not a bad word. No is actually a, a really important word to learn how to say, especially if you are just constantly taking on more and more. COVID cakes too. <laughs> Food dessert is life. I love it. Yes, I'm a foodie too. Okay, moving on to expectations. All right, this is another really um, a big source of stress for teachers. All right, so you've had to adjust your expectations. And the first expectations I'm referring to are the expectations of yourself as a teacher. So how you used to be all of your career in the classroom it's really hard to be that same type of teacher online. And so maybe you're feeling um, disappointed in yourself or um, you feel like you, um, you could be doing something better or could be doing something differently. And so you're being really hard on yourself. My piece of advice today is to say, be kinder to yourself. Okay, this is a major change in environment, as we've said. You've gone from the highly interactive space in the classroom to a very unnatural space to be engaging with a whole class of children. Just be patient and give yourself some grace that this is a very big change in teaching format, okay? Um, 
it is going to look different to pre-pandemic teaching. All right, and that's okay. This is not forever. Of course, you still, I'm sure all of you are trying your best and doing your best, but it is okay that it looks different. This is what adjusting expectations is about. I really want to read this, that page set, sent. The secret of setting boundaries is knowing that boundaries are used in the act of respect and self-care. Beautifully put, Paige. That is exactly what I'm trying to convey. Thank you. Um, the next thing in expectations is your expectations on yourself as a member of your household. Okay. I said this a few minutes ago. You are not superhuman. You cannot be on top of your job, your household cleaning, your household cooking, helping your kids with their homework, making sure they don't watch too, me too much TV, um, being a good friend, you know, doing all the things, exercising, what 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 It's not possible to be on top of everything, okay? So you need to just give yourself some grace and say, we are not superhumans. Exactly, Huang. Okay, so that means your house might not look as tidy as you'd like it to. It's okay. It's temporary. Your kids might be watching more TV than you'd like them to. It's okay. It's temporary. Okay. So this is just how we're going to get through this tough phase. And the biggest piece of advice is just kindness, patience towards yourself. Okay. All right. Okay, the next thing is um, expectations of your students. So, I mean, I've been doing webinars with the kids and they're also, and as you all know, as educators, they're also really struggling. This is so hard for kids to be away from their friends when they're such social beings too. So um, really, I think that um, you have to also be um, realistic in what we expect of them. So I, I'm finding it quite hard that your once talkative and confident students are now a bit more subdued, a bit more disinterested. You might have had this really fun conversation dynamic in your classroom and now it feels like you're saying, unmute, 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 switch on your camera <laughs> for half the class. Okay. So um, you, you have to be patient with your children too. And, and accept that this is also really hard for them. I'm not saying to not expect good outcomes from your children, absolutely not. But to, um, to understand that this transition is really weird for them. And when we return, when we finally return to offline learning, it's also going to be a very big transition period. Now we're going back. Are my friends still going to like me? Who am I going to sit next to? What's it going to be like to answer a question when I can't just mute myself? Okay, so all these things are going to be quite weird too. So it's just about stepping back, patience, kindness, grace. Okay, so that's my point on that. Then connections. <sighs> yeah, as I mentioned, you know, how do you stay connected to others when you're not supposed to be physically seeing others um you know and this is where a lot of us have had to rely on technology because you know i live across the world from my from my parents so i'm i'm constantly filming everything my daughter does and so it's um it's really um it's technology has been huge with how we maintain connection but i i want to know how you're doing with this chronic isolation are you feeling lonely and even if you live with people, you can still feel lonely. You know, you're seeing, seeing the same people every day, day in and day out. That means that conflict at home is probably also increasing because it's also not natural to be seeing the same people all the time and not having space. So um, I'm expecting that, you know, some of you are feeling lonely. Would you agree? Patience, kindness, and grace. Be kind to ourselves. Translation was not working at first, but didn't ruin it. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm glad you can, you can still understand. Um, I'm expecting that a lot of you are still feeling quite isolated and lonely. 
And maybe, you know, now that we are sort of allowed to see people a little more, maybe you're finding it quite hard to get back into being social again. What does it mean to go out and not wear pajamas? Okay, it's, it's weird. So how are you finding ways to connect with other people in, in, in a safe way at the moment? Please share. Oh, hide myself in the bathroom and cry. Oh, my goodness. That is so relatable for parents because sometimes the bathroom is the only place you can just have a moment to yourself. Sure. Video calls, FaceTime. Yeah, that's definitely um, group chat. Social media webinars. Yeah, you suffer. Face-to-face. Of course, face-to-face -face is so different to online. I mean, thank goodness we have online, but it's, it's, it's just not the same. Yeah. Video calls for work for, from home. 5K, yeah. Yeah. I found the same, you know, I'm, I'm still talking to people, but I, I still feel lonely, you know. It's not the same as going for a coffee or feel lonely in my family because we don't have the same opinions. Absolutely, you know. We, we, we start to butt heads, as we say in English. Um, have we ever spent this much time with our families before? Probably not. Five more minutes. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm going to quickly move on. So yeah, technology has got its pros and cons. So we need it for online teaching. And probably all of us are spending more time online than we ever used to. Okay, so we're spending all day staring at the screen. And now we're also needing it to stay in touch with our friends, as we've said. But we're also now needing it to maybe do a YouTube workout or to watch Netflix or whatever. So we're probably spending a lot of time on a screen. Okay. And that's fine. If it's working for you, it's fine. But I want you to think about yourself and think about how it might be affecting your mental health. And things like your body image. When you scroll Instagram, when you scroll social media, how do you feel about yourself, your confidence, your self-worth? Um, unfortunately, one of the biggest downsides of social media is that we compare ourselves to others a lot more. And that's not always real. What we're seeing on, on Instagram is not always real. So we have to bear that in mind. Um, sometimes our sleep is impacted by how much blue light has been in our eyes. Sometimes we do less physical activity because we are literally sitting on the couch surfing the internet all day. Oh, for those of you that can't afford to go to your hometown, that must have been so hard. So, so hard. And Vietnamese culture is so much about the family and connecting and sharing meals. Okay, weekly online classes. Nice. Learned a lot from VUS, especially using and maintaining technology for teaching and learning. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really good to hear. That's really good to hear. Yeah, so we've all had to we've all had to learn a lot, and 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 I think that's made me realize that I'm getting older. That I've found the challenge of learning how to use new tech tools really difficult at times. So I wanted to say to you that, um, you know, instead of letting tech be your be frightening, is there a way you can make it less frightening? So whether you've got a teenager at home who can help you or a YouTube tutorial that can teach you, just a few technological tools you can use in the online classroom will make such a difference for your own confidence as a teacher because it will probably allow your children to, to engage more. Therefore, it will be a more pleasant experience for all. But you'll also experience that sense of mastery that I achieved this. I learned a new skill. I can do it. Okay. All right. Um. I just don't want to, to go on for too much longer. Okay, so in your own time, you can do this. But I really like you to write a goal for yourself just after what we've chatted about today. Um, I think it helps to write it down because it, then it means you can refer to it in a few weeks time and see how you're actually doing. You know, and, and when you set this goal for yourself, please try to be as smart as possible. So this means specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. Give yourself a time frame when you want to have done this by. Give yourself, for example, I would like to practice um, 30 minutes of yoga three times a week um, for the next six months. Something like that, that you can actually, um, you can actually check in on how you're doing. That would be really helpful. So, so please may I ask you all to set yourself a mental health goal 
Um, whether it means more time for self-care, whether it means being kinder to yourself about the state of your house mess, whatever it might be that you set one for yourself. Last week's webinar was so timely to help teachers. Please don't miss the webinar one. Technologies are helpful, but not substitute teachers. Just learn them. Okay, nice. You can learn a lot of online apps. You can use smart for almost everything. Absolutely. I think goal setting is just one of the most wonderful underrated things in life. Okay. All right. And then quickly, if anybody is, is experiencing some serious um, uh, mental health related issues, there are there is support available. Okay. So this is like major changes in sleep, too much or too little, major changes in appetite, increase or decrease. Not able to do the tasks you used to love or used to be able to do quite easily. No longer interested in the things you used to find enjoyable. Self-harming. Substance use or misuse or abuse. Expressing thoughts of wanting to quit, end, give up, die. Okay, these are more serious um, symptoms and I would encourage you to reach out for help. And the, the help channels that I've learned about, and, and they're not as many as we would like to see, but I, I believe it's going to change. Your local doctor is always a good place to start because he or she can probably refer you. Um, your school might have some counseling services available. Then there are some free programs. For some reason, this font is so light on my side. I, I'll post it in the chat, but it's called Vaccine for the Soul. This is the English translation. It's all Vietnamese and it's free hotline counseling services. And it's to do with the uh, non-physical effects of COVID-19. So exactly this, mental health impact of COVID-19. Um, your PSFA, which is also a free counseling online service. All of this is free, which is also really amazing. The Help Me app, which is also to do with um, COVID-19 related issues. Um, the Center for Child Communication and Counseling Services. It might be more for child services, but it's also worth um, a look. There's a free Vietnamese mindfulness app called mindfully.vn and this is a mindfulness app in Vietnamese which is just amazing and it's free and then there's this Deca yoga um yoga and mental health service all in Vietnamese these are all local resources I'll post this in the chat sorry I'm just rushing through this now and then my last page sing tham on you I'm wishing you all better days of better mental health for, for years to come. And, you know, this too shall pass. And you've got this because I know you said you're not superhuman, but I do believe that teachers are a special type of human. So thank you very, very much. So um, I know I've completely gone over time. I'd love to hear from you now in, in, in the Q&A if anybody has any pressing questions, anything that any comments, anything you want to raise. Thank you so much. Oh, such a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Um, anybody have questions? Thanks so much, Emma. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that this is useful. It's not fun doing it if it's not useful. Oh, great. Let me actually sh share the, um, the resources in the chat. In case anyone wants, yeah, the um the vaccine for the soul. I think they have their own YouTube page, YouTube channel. Oh, such a pleasure! Thank you. Such lovely feedback makes me feel so good. Such a pleasure, and oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Yeah, so these are just some of the resources if you want to check them out. Um, it's nice to know what's available locally. Okay. I don't think there are any questions, Ms. Han. Thank you very much, Emma, for your fruitful, informative, and, and really helpful. Personally oh, to me, I find it really, really helpful. So oh, thanks a lot for sharing then. it out. Thanks such a lot for sharing pleasure. it out. À, cảm ơn cô Emma rất là nhiều về về buổi trình bày rất nhiều thông tin bổ ích và hôm thấy các thầy cô và cũng hạnh tin là sẽ chia sẻ được khá là nhiều uh, những cái băn khoăn những cái bận tâm của giáo viên trong mùa online vừa rồi và hy vọng rằng là sau buổi hôm nay uh, thì các thầy cô mình sẽ có nhiều ý tưởng hơn để chúng ta có thể tái tạo lại được những cái năng lượng tích cực cho sức khỏe tinh thần của mình sẵn sàng cho những giờ học online và cho những cuộc sống mới 
BUS, your English, your future.